Welcome to the October 1, 2012 meeting of the Lake Forest Committee of the Whole. Bertie, would you call the roll, please? Honorable James Cowie. Here. Alderman Novit. Here. Alderman Waldeck. Here. Alderman Moore. Here. Alderman Pandelian. Here. Alderman Morsh. Oh, I'm sorry. Not here. Pardon me. I have my old list. <laughs> Alderman Tack. I apologize. Here. Alderman Schoenheider. Here. Alderman Palmer. Here. Alderman Edelman. Here. Nine present, zero absent. Acting chairman, we have a quorum. Thank you, Bertie. Uh, first item on the agenda this evening is approval of the minutes for the June 4, 2012 committee meeting. A copy of the minutes were distributed as part of our packet. Any comments, corrections, changes to the minutes? Move to, Move to approve. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. Motion passes. Uh, item number three is a discussion tonight on the Route 60 median plan. Uh, and I think, Mary, you're up. Good evening, Chairman and members of the City Council. Um, as we mentioned, I'm here tonight to uh, give a presentation, and I will try to keep it brief because I know you got a very in-depth packet, but um, talking about the medians along Route 60. Um, to start the presentation tonight, just to give you a reference, we are talking about the landscaping area that is from 294 to <coughs> basically the underpass, right, adjacent to where the compost center is and the new uh, Townline Community Park. The areas that we're talking about are lit up here in this particular slide for you in yellow, and there are three medians that uh, we are uh, looking at right now. And they're quite substantial in size, as, as you are aware. Um, and our hope here tonight is to share with you some of the concerns and challenges that we've been looking at and then for you to give us hopefully some direction on what you would like us to proceed with next. So there's no action tonight. It's an informational um, presentation only and, and then we'll hopefully staff can take back the direction we get from you and bring something back to you very shortly. So moving next to the next area, um, just some background. This was initially planted by the state of Illinois when they widened the Route 60 uh, section. In 2009, we started with a naturalized prairie planting there in order to kind of blend in with the sta other stakeholders in the area like Opus and as well as uh, Pactiv, et cetera. There, we've spent so far since 2000, or really since uh, 2008, $104,093. And this has come from the Route 60 Beautification Fund, which is funded not by tax dollars, but by um, impact fees from our tree preservation ordinance. But as you know, we have seen this area continue to struggle since that time. Um, some of the reasons why it has struggled really quickly is that it's a soil condition. We did an assessment out there because everything we've been trying to plant initially seems to take off and then seems to struggle. Partly we've had drought and we've had some other weather challenges, but it hasn't quite um, uh, correlated exactly with why we've had some challenges. So we did a little bit more in-depth analysis um, with us this year. And what we have found is that there is very poor soils in this area. There is clay on about six inches of clay and below it is compacted gravel as this illustration um, you know, will show you. And the compacted gravel is really takes you down to the bed of the, uh, the road and then there's undisturbed soil under that. But as you can see, it's going to be a very challenging environment for trees, for instance, to really take root because they would be trying to grow through the compacted <coughs> gravel. The other challenge in the, um, in the area is we do have some trees in there that we planted. Um, currently we have um, hawthorn trees uh, uh, planted, or accolade elms, I'm sorry, throughout the whole area. And uh, we've struggled with getting them to grow. But we have um, about, of those trees, we have about 20 that we cannot transplant. But the remaining of them could be transplanted and utilized again in our, in our medians as we go forward. So we haven't lost all of the trees that are currently there, but we have lost 20 of them due to their condition. The other challenges for the area is the hardscape and utilities. This is an um, area, the medians are inverted, um, so that there is drainage towards the center, and we have manholes and utilities there in the middle that are recessed. So if we wanted to move forward with 
a landscape plan that um, didn't have that kind of challenge, we would want to raise those um, hardscape utilities to be to grade of what we would put in for new soils. The other challenge is there's no irrigation, as you uh, know, throughout that area. So it is a um, area that currently the city's trucks go at night, usually between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m., and we do the irrigation with trucks and, and do our watering during the times of the year where we're seeing stress or these last couple years when we've had new plantings trying to get established. And that is labor intensive, um, and it's not as consistent as an irrigation system would provide. So having said that, we did set some goals when we looked at it, and this is the city staff are looking at this primarily because of, I think, aldermen have heard concerns from residents throughout the community, but especially those that live along the corridor, as well as, um, you know, the fact that we've been struggling with uh, working with AES to see what we could get established. And so this really has come about from a desire from the community to improve the appearance in that main corridor coming into the community. So one of the goals we looked at was we wanted a landscape appearance that could be good for all four seasons of the year have minimal maintenance needs, um, be sustainable along a salted, busy roadway, and we do know that's a huge challenge is the salt that gets thrown up there during the winter months. Um, and then one of the new things that came on the horizon, of course, is the BMW event at Conway, and we're really trying to you know, showcase our community to the level that it should be um, coming into the community, and that could be, you know, just nice grass or it could be even more as we're going to show you here as an example tonight and then we wanted to make sure it still continued to fit within the overall landscape palette along the corridor um, we did put in your packet some colored designs um, what we were we looked at all different options I won't go through all those because they were in your packet but the one that seemed to resonate with us was what we have titled stylized prairie we worked with Mariani landscaping to come up with a plan for this particular area and it basically stylized prairie means we would do mass plantings um, of plants that have a lot of structure and form to them which would look maybe a little bit less uh, I don't want to use the word weedy, but that's what some people like to describe the, the prairie, uh, but a little more um, structured in their look. And uh, we would also group some trees in there instead of the straight rows of trees. There'd be groupings of trees to kind of give some, uh, you know, definition to the area as well as help divide the sight lines in, in a minimal way between the, uh, these busy six lanes of highway out there. And then we also looked at an edging treatment as well. Um, and we looked at putting a six-foot uh, edge treatment around the entire medians in order to help us with the, the kickoff that you get from the salt that comes in and could um, you know damage the plants if you put turf or you put plants along those edges uh, you have risk having to replace them as they you know get impacted by the salt or um, it also would allow us to uh, uh, put a, an edge on there that takes down the total volume of area that would have to be maintained um, so that was the landscape design we have um, met with the Civic Beautification Committee. We've also met with the Route 60 Beautification and the Stakeholders Committee. Both of these, the, the Civic Beautification is made up of Garden Club representatives, and then we met with the different stakeholders um, that are called the Route 60 Beautification Group, which includes most of all the homeowners associations out there, Academy Woods, Conway, um, Amberley, as well as uh, the golf course, um, and then the Conway Office Park Association and Opus. And we've tried to, you know, share with them the struggles, <coughs> the challenges we have at that site, and get their feedback on this as well. And I, we also met with uh, Alderman um, uh, Tack as well as um, Alderman Schoenheider about this so that we could get their feedback on where we were headed with everything. And of course, Mariani, Mariani Landscaping has been a great partner with us so far in helping um, you know, identify what would be some good options for this site. Going forward, um, we do have some challenging things on the horizon from a timeline in order to move the project forward. And again, we wouldn't do this without council um, input, but we wanted to let you know that this, would, this project would require new IDOT permits. The permit that we had for IDOT um, was a maintenance permit which expired on the past planting that we did, and that was in 2010. Because this would require potentially excavation of soils, um, then the asphalt, some of the end caps, we would want to add irrigation, and there's replanting involved with it. IDOT will require us to have new permits on this. However, we have met with IDOT. We are working with 
um, expediting a new permit and I think with uh, all we need at this point is a, an engineering plan as well as a landscape plan then we think we could move the approvals through IDOT pretty quickly um, so that is in the works and Public Works has been assisting um, my department with the as built and helping uh, work on the engineering documents that would be necessary um, the second challenge that we would have to move forward is the availability of quality soil Ideally, in order to get the opportunity to put any landscaping in whatever we should select to do, we would want to do some of the soil removals this fall, this fall with excavation and replace, put the irrigation system in if we choose to irrigate, and then put the soils in so they would have some time to settle, as well as not leave those medians open as big, you know, open trenches, which would be very um, ugly as well as challenging during the winter to, uh, to have. So we would want to get our soils and we would want to stockpile those so that as soon as it's excavated out, you immediately put the soils and the irrigation system in, we grade it, we leave it, and then in the spring we would be ready to um, start our planting. We would also want to take care of doing the tree removals. We could do those in-house um, for a portion of them, but probably not all of them. It is a lot of trees. We don't have a spade that's large enough to take these trees, these particular trees out, but we could assist with that. But we would want to get the tree removals done as well so that we can ensure using them again um, with the, you know, the next landscape uh, plan that we choose. So all of these, these things up here is something that we're anxious to get direction from council on so that we know how to proceed and that we can meet a timeline of hopefully being able to get something going in the spring and have it established uh, by fall of next year. So some of the financial considerations, I know I did not have this in the packet that was sent out to you on Friday, but this is a little bit more of a breakdown on the financial considerations um, for this project. Um, uh, the, um, the biggest number here on here is the excavation and backfill. It's quite expensive, $145,000 to do, this is all three medians. The hardscape and edge improvements, that's raising the um, utilities in the middle as well as putting a six foot buffer around all of the, um, the edging. And what this is priced on right now is assuming that we would do a crushed limestone with a binding agent around it as a six foot um, buffer around all of the edges. The planting would be 89,000 and that's all the plant materials and the city would put those in so we would save on the labor cost there. The irrigation is approximately $62,000 and Bob and I have had conversations with um, <coughs> Ernie from Conway Office Park and they, the good news is that they had stubbed out off their ponds out in three different locations along the Route 60 corridor a uh, stub to an irrigation ends there. So we could tap into their pond and have that infrastructure is already in place. Our expense, the 62,000, would be for us to bore under the highway and take it to each of the beds and then put a simple sprinkler system down each of the beds so we could irrigate the landscape plan appropriately. The $10,000 is for plans and permits. We do have about $5,000 commitments to Mariani at this point to assist us with <clears throat> developing the landscape plan and the cost estimates that have uh, come forward tonight. As also we would have to have the engineering agreement and um, documents that we'd have to take. And then there's uh, some basic um, uh, other documents that we may have to do um, in order to get all the as built completed. And then the final thing on here was a contract oversight. It's $20,000, depending on who has the oversight of the project. If Conway Office Parks assists us with this, that could be something that we possibly do not need. However, Mariani most likely would be a good choice to have the, con the oversight because then they can be out there and ensure the soils are appropriate, the, <clears throat> the grading is appropriate, and all the plants that are going in get planted in the scheme that they are proposing for their landscape plan. Um, so that gives you the median subtotal, which is 366,000. Um, we did put some contingency in there, so you've kind of got the worst case scenario up there as far as um, the kind of cost. Now, having said that, I think it's important to note that um, we still have money remaining in the Route 60 Beautification Fund, um, which is about $52,000. And we also have coming forward some new tree preservation impact fees, which could possibly go into this um, cost to help offset <clears> it, <throat> as well as um, 
Bob and I, again, Anna and Don, have reached out to those various stakeholders to talk about partnership opportunities because the whole corridor out there will benefit in this zone, um, you know, from improving it, and it is something that they, that neighborhood, and et cetera, has requested as well. So we'd like to look at it as a community partnership here on in making this improvement happen. So what are the, these uh, do outline the funding sources that I just mentioned. Um, stakeholders, the remaining funds, and then the future funds coming forward, and then what would balance would be would be the city. We would hope that between now and the next time we would bring something back to you based on the direction you give us, we'll have more detail to share as to what those commitments might look like. Um, but we don't have that yet, and we wanted to make sure we priced the project first um, before we also confirmed any of the funding commitments. So our next steps is to finalize what direction you'd like us to take the <coughs> landscape plan, so then we can revise cost estimates if necessary, finalize the engineering plan, take this to the IDOT to get the necessary permits, and secure our funding commitments. This is a very aggressive timetable. We'd like to bring this back to you in two weeks um, so that the City Council can discuss and decide how they would like us to proceed. I think with that type of timetable, it is feasible for us to do this work this winter and to get something planted for the spring. So those are the, some of the challenges um, of the project. But um, with that, I'm gonna open it up for questions and see if there's anything that I didn't cover. I'd be happy to answer. Thanks, Mary, very much. Uh, questions for Mary? I have a question. What is the nature of IDOT's interest in these planners? Um, say that again? What is the nature of IDOT's interest in these planters? Well, um, it's a state road, so we, it's still their property. Normally, this would be maintained by them. Since we're asking to change what is their standard, you know, fill with grass on top of it, and then that is their requirement in order to modify <coughs> the road or put anything underneath it, just as if we were to bore under, somebody wanted to put a, a drainage underneath one of our, our roads, they would have to um, come to us for a permit to do that. So similar along those lines. And then they would like to also confirm what would be the maintenance going forward because we would be putting in what is not the standard city's landscape plan. Um, and so we would, we would have to take on the burden of ensuring to them that we're gonna maintain it going forward, so. A couple of questions. There had to be original specifications that the IDOT gave out to the contractor. Is there any way to get our hands on that to see that the fill that they actually put in there conformed with the specifications? And if it didn't and they still do work for IDOT, perhaps we've got some leverage uh, to get some compensation from them for not having performed the contract per specifications. <coughs> Is that a possibility? It's a, it's a possibility. I mean, it's been many years and we've since modified it with our own plantings. I don't know if they, I'm how talking that about would the work, fill, but. Though. I mean, th there had to be a contract specifying the fill that was put in the medium when sure. it was constructed. Yeah, we can look, for, look into that. I, I don't know. Because my understanding from the soil borings you did, that uh, it's really garbage that they put in. <laughs> and it's hard to believe that IDOT specified that. <laughs> so maybe we've got some <laughs> You're optimistic. I'm, and I'm <laughs> sure the bond is gone, but if there's still a contractor with IDOT, right. perhaps we've got some leverage. Well, I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong though, Mary, on her cross section that was up there, there was, what, four inches of black soil on top of the clay, but once you get down very far, and I, it wouldn't surprise me if that is their, their um, specifications, because if you look at <clears> most <throat> medians along state right of ways, all they are grass. And grass would, or weeds, would do very well in this. It's when you try to start to do anything different. We can also find out what the specifications are. Most recently, uh, 22 is a relatively new project, and it wouldn't surprise me if Bannockburn or somebody stepped in and said, these aren't acceptable. We want to modify these before they were bid out. Yeah, and that's another thing. You read my mind. Route 22 east of Waukegan Road, it's spectacular, and I suspect it's similar to what you envision here, prairie grasses and, and <coughs> plantings and stuff. 
I hope to heck that they irrigated theirs, otherwise it looks like a lot of expensive landscaping. Well, it's actually an interesting stretch because part of it is Bannockburn, part of it is Highland Park, right. and um, they've actually replanted that because I drive that stretch quite a bit. Um, they've replanted that several times. If you drive there now, you will see soaker hoses that lay on top of the ground from the section that's, I think, mostly Bannockburn, um, about down to Ridge. And then you get into the new area that they just did, and it is spectacular. They put in a lot of these similar kinds of plants with mulch around it. Um, but I don't think, and I will, we will check on it, but last I had heard, I don't believe they put <coughs> irrigation in that. So hmm. that it's how well it'll do going forward, I'm not sure. But they are hardy plants that they put in, so. Is that Lake, Wa Lake Forest City Water and those Bannockburn soaker hoses? <laughs> Uh, no, that's, that's actually Highland Park, uh, Lake Michigan water. Bannockburn does have for its islands uh, access for um, irrigation. I'm not sure if they've been installed yet. And uh, Bannockburn, in fact, has uh, <coughs> committed to share a substantial uh, amount of money in order to have upgraded landscaping throughout that area. I was confusing Delmar Woods with yeah. that. <laughs> Sorry. Um, AES, last May we approved the expenditure of $87,000. I thought it was over three years, but looking at the last page here, it looks like 80,000 of it's been spent in one year. In any event, they were supposed to give us an annual memorandum uh, reporting back on their assessment of the median. Have they done that for 2012? Yes, they actually did do a memorandum after year one, which is partly why we did have them come back out at that time. They uh, went to uh, additional receding, additional plugs. Peter might be able to answer a little bit more specifics on that. Um, but they did do some uh, more work than they had anticipated because the first year didn't take as well as they had yeah. hoped. Um, and then also the weeds kind of took over a little bit more than they had anticipated. So we required them to come out and they at that time did a sp uh, spray and kill off. And then they brought plugs in and put plugs in and try to get those going as well. So, and we also, that was the time we replaced about half of the trees um, and they replaced that on their, at their cost because the trees were struggling. So yeah. um, they've done, have given us reports and that's been part of why we've been kind of really tracking this as closely as we have because we've been concerned about where it's all been headed and they've been struggling with it as well. Okay. Is there anything in their memorandum or findings uh, of significance that we haven't already discussed here? No, I don't okay. think so. You mentioned saving the trees there and I guess this question's best for Peter. Um, it seemed like the majority, majority of the trees, over 50% of them, the tops are barren, the top five, six feet or so, or they're stripped and barren, they look dead. Are those trees in good enough condition that they merit saving and replanting? Can that uh, be pruned out and the trees will be fine? Uh, there's approximately 37 trees that are worth saving after our inventory out of 57, uh, so probably 20 that you speak of are not worth saving and not worth the time to transplant. Uh, so in total, 37 uh, certainly can be reused. Okay. The other thing I didn't clarify, and I would just mention, is that of the money we spent, of the $80,404 so far, that also included work we did on the two shoulders. Uh -huh. we, are, we do not have to redo that. So that's not a complete loss of the ex money that we've spent so far. So really, just in the median area, we've spent $32,900 of that contract. Well, was the, for the, medi the middle the, medians. The, the north shoulder, the first 100 yards west of the train track trestle, that north shoulder is yeah. awful. It's continued to struggle, and we've yeah. put different things in there. We've had a, we actually killed off everything this fall and uh, put a cover crop on just to hold it for now while we made a decision yeah. on where we were going to go with it. We've put in some annuals with Cosmos. You probably saw those yeah. blooming there. So, Just for comments' sake, the roundabout that they constructed at Everett and Riverwoods Road for Costco mm. is magnificent. It's, it's a big circle. They use stamped concrete for 15 foot setback from the curb. Then beautiful plantings. Uh, they're elevated so it blocks see through vision. So you have to pay attention to the roundabout. They not only irrigate it, but they light it at night. It's quite magnificent. I suspect the stamped concrete for the first 15 foot apron is for the same issue we discussed a year ago, throwing the salt laden snow up on the plantings it would be counterproductive. So this way the snow goes up on the concrete 
not up on the plantings. Our medians don't appear to be wide enough. And I, as beautiful as this would be, and I think last year we had conversation how the state of Illinois twice mowed down the median and they weren't supposed to. I don't know how we're ever going to prevent them from mowing down our new native grasses and stuff. Doesn't it make sense to consider, even though it would be a lot harsher looking, something non-organic like a paver block or a stamped concrete instead, something that could be attractive but maintenance free, that wouldn't have an irrigation system that crews would have to go out and blow out every fall and you know antifreeze whatever and it wouldn't require constant oversight it'd be a one-shot deal you got any thoughts on that i mean it's certainly an option we looked at a variety of options um we w drove and looked at many of these intersections you're mentioning as well um, you could certainly make it an all entire hardscape surface out there i know that currently it's a hardscape surface that's really down near academy woods um, and it's crumbling and it's it was just asphalt inside the the curbing if you will but it's kind of showing its wear so things rocks do kick up on there and and you know we've heard that that's not really um, a very desirable <coughs> appearance but again you could sweep it and do some things like that um, down at willow if you come off of 294 and or 94 i guess in willow um, going into Glenview, what they chose to do there, it's a very wide six lane as well. When you first come off, it, the first median, what they did was they planted it with a similar proposal like we are suggesting here with a clump of trees, a couple clumps of trees, and then some nice landscape underneath that, and then it just, that ends, and then the whole rest of the median almost all the way down to land where it's just mowed grass. So you don't have the expense of, you know, and maintenance of all of the landscaping for such long stretches. Um, the plant material here is, you know, uh, not the biggest chunk of this cost. It's more the irrigation and the excavation and stuff. So by going that route, you would save some significant dollars by not doing the entire medians. However, what you see right now would look very similar to what you see now, though. It would be actually grass. I would propose we'd put grass in instead yeah. of the mowed prairie that we have right now. But um, those are those are all the kinds of options that we're kind of we've been looking at and weighed but um, again we brought in a plan that we thought would dress up all of the areas for any homeowner group coming out of their different sections would see it and that there was consistency down the entire stretch so we are open to whatever suggestions and direction you'd like us to pursue at this time okay one more question and then a comment financial considerations you talk about potential funding sources we um, carefully deliberated the $87,000 last year. Now we're looking at 384,000, which is a whole lot of money. And I understand it comes from tree impact fees as opposed to um, tax revenues. It's still money that could be applied in a worthwhile fashion, perhaps on other uh, meritorious projects. Of the 384,000, what do you think the city's participation will be if you could give me a range how much what percentage of that you think you'll get from other stakeholders and how much do you think the city would have to fund i haven't run those numbers yet and honestly I, i'm not sure i know bob's had more conversation i think with some of the stakeholders than i have about their possible contribution um i don't know that i think the other thing we want to spend a little time on is um is what might be future tree um preservation ordinance impacts that are going to be coming our way and kind of give some estimate dollars. For instance, with the BMW event, Conway will have to remove a significant volume of trees off the golf course. That money would, in essence, go into this fund, which could help with this project. But we don't have those numbers yet. Um, we'd have to do some calculation along those along that line. Yeah, and then so. my, just my final comment really pertains to the BMW. Um, it's a great event. It's going to put us in the spotlight. Uh, it'd be great to have this done in time for that, yet I feel like it's putting pressure on us to rush, kind of like rushing your golf swing and then everything <laughs> goes sideways. Good yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's a significant consideration, but I'd hate for that to push us into acting rashly because it seems like last year those monies were down the drain, so to speak. And um, besides the median beautification, we've got that train overpass and that's looking worse by the minute and if we do the median we don't get that train trestle painted it's you know you're as strong as your weakest link so to speak 
And I do know that's come up as well. We've talked about that. Um, there's been a couple options, I think, are being investigated for the train trestle, but. That's going to be a lot of money. <laughs> it's, a, it's a long quarter, and there's a variety of challenging issues, and yet it's, and I think, you know, it's important to say this is an unbudgeted project. Um, so we do need the partnership potentially, and we want to try to get these monies down as much as possible. But again, the question is how expansive of a plan and so that we can actually price it for you. And with what's being put in, yeah, I think we might be better off just looking forward to a one-year solution at this point, planting so it will make this very presentable <coughs> for next summer, and then examining possibly after that for a more long-term solution. Because I, I don't know if we're going to get any <coughs> type of long-term solution by planting trees and things that might need a year or two to mature. I, I think we're looking for more just seasonal plantings at this point to make this presentable. I, yeah, I mean, I don't know cost-wise if it's really possible to get a permanent solution in and make that decision in two weeks. So is there a more short-term solution where maybe we could get sponsorship uh, from some of the uh, companies in Conway that help make this happen? Well, let me maybe respond because let me um, try and focus what the real issue is. And this is why we're bringing this to you because we are hearing from some people and actually one of the uh, uh, adjoining properties is represented here this evening is that this is a gateway into the community. And some would argue this is the main gateway into the community because more cars go on Route 60 than probably any other street uh, we have in the city of Lake Forest. We can modify this plan accordingly, but the real essence, what we have learned, unfortunately, even though you know we've, I would say, threw thirty-six thousand uh, dollars away to learn this, is that unless you change the soils and unless you put in irrigation, anything you do is basically a one-year effort, uh, other than grow grass. And so, what we're really trying to get feedback from you on is, is this plan too elaborate? Are we happy with just grass? Are we happy with the way it looks right now? And we're fine with that. What is the image that you feel we need to convey out there on Route 60? And then we can develop that plan. And I think um, Alderman Edelman, in response to your question, we have gotten very positive feedback from all of the adjoining properties. But I need to be able to really go to them and say, OK, we're going forward with this plan, and I need this money from you. Because uh, right now it's all been conjecture, but everybody has said that they're willing to participate. And, and my goal would be at least half of the cost is paid for, if not three quarters of the cost is paid for through these other sources. Bob, my, my only concern <clears throat> is we don't control the plowing on, on Route 60. The state does. And as much as we put forth a Herculean effort to beautify it, the state could just could negate it with careless uh, acts out there. Right. I mean, if, if our crews were snow plowing it, they'd be diligent about not destroying all the money we're going to invest in a beautification program. Right. And I, I don't know if Peter can address that, but clearly that has been a major issue for us in dealing with Mariani and others is that these materials have to be um, willing or able to withstand the salt, number mm -hmm. one, but also I understand the irrigation comes into play in that. But Peter, I'm way out of my uh, realm of expertise now, so you better address that concern. No, I, I think you're heading down the right path, and certainly uh, salt is a major issue. And even if, <clears throat> excuse me, to some degree, you know, the streets are plowed at a slower pace, there's a lot of drift when salt dries. And so we've tried to pick plants that uh, we've uh, researched and other medians that seem to have worked. Uh, there's no doubt we'll have a slight number of mortalities when it comes to some of the plants just based on the environments. Um, but water also helps dilute salt, uh, as does things like gypsum, so we can kind of help control those salt lever levels by irrigation. Peter, is there a chemical they can lay down during the winter season that neutralizes salt? 
So uh, that every 30 days you put something down on the median that'll neutralize the salt? Is that there is if you're using environmentally sensitive chemicals, salt products, but you have to realize that they have a goal and that's safety. So the products that they're using aren't necessarily environmentally sensitive. They're there to break down the ice and get the job done quickly. So uh, probably not with that salt. Uh, but we do, like I said, add things like gypsum that tries to neutralize it, but that's an addition in the springtime. Uh, obviously, because our soils are dormant and frozen in the uh, winter months. Can, can I jump in briefly for just a moment? And you know, all of us uh, who sit on this council and, and the mayor as well, and, and Bob and staff, get their share of emails and calls from residents. And Randy and I represent this area, and I will tell you that of, in the two years that I've been on the council, of all the calls that I've gotten about issues, I would venture a guess to say at least a third, if not more, are about this particular item. So I was the one who maybe 90 days ago kind of raised my hand with Bob and Mary and said, hey, look, we've got to do something about this because it's not working. What we've had just simply is not worked. And yes, there's no question about it. We've thrown good money after bad. There's, I mean, <clears throat> we've spent money that we shouldn't have spent. We've done things we shouldn't have done. But the reality is, and Bob really hit it on the head, and that's where I was going, we know a couple of things. If we know, with the exception, Mike, of putting concrete down, um, we know we've got to take soil out if anything's going to grow there. Um, and we know if it's going to grow properly, we're going to need to irrigate it. So of the $384,000 that Mary has on her budget, you know, approximately half, a little more than half, are for those two items. Those are almost givens to me. And I think what Mary's trying to do and her team's trying to do is we're trying to get the stuff that can get done now done, ideally before the weather gets bad or while the weather is in transition. And I think the assumption that everybody's making that's touched this a little bit is that the soil's got to get removed and we've got to put the new stuff in and the irrigation's got to get hooked up. And then perhaps what we do, and I think that's the crux Mary of the, the state permit as well, since, you know, think about it, we're going to have trucks in there digging stuff out, uh, messing up state road. So, I mean, we've got to make sure we have a permit, and we've got to make sure they're on board with it. But I think, I think <coughs> the, the piece that we, we kind of need to look at two pieces. The first piece is we all need to decide if, if we're going to do something with this better than or something different than what we have today. And I think the general feeling is, yeah, we really need to. So if that's the case, then let's take it in steps. And the first step is we've got to get rid of the soil and backfill it, and we've got to get the irrigation system in. <clears throat> and ideally, we'd like to get that in before winter so that when the spring comes, we can test the irrigation system, the soil's had a chance to compact, and then perhaps we can decide if, if this is the plan we want to go with. We can bid out the plant materials, and we can bid out some of the work so we'll have a better scope and idea of exactly what our cost is. But we've done the basics and the groundwork that needs to get done right now so that if there is a chance for whatever this is going to look like come September for the BMW, it's going to look good. Can I ask a quick question, then? and it's just for the sake of it. I'm mm -hmm. in complete agreement with what you say, and that's plan A. How long, though, does it take to get IDOT's approval? Because, again, if it's a time-consuming process, then we need a plan B. And, and Mary, I, I don't have well, that. Well, we have um, we've spoken uh, with Senator Susan Garrett, who has helped us get into IDOT. IDOT, when they were told of this project and they've received uh, copies of the plans, they don't see any problem. But as Mary said, they need an engineering plan to look at. Our staff has been working on putting one together. We hope to have it submitted. How soon? Quickly. Uh, and uh, next week, th yeah, the state has <laughs> said that like. they don't expect problems. Now, I think what we might also do, if it needs to happen, is to follow up on Alderman Schoenheider's point: is actually break this into two permits. Get a permit to at least remove yeah. the soils and put in the irrigation mm -hmm. system, and then we'll come back to you with the final landscaping plan, and you can sign off on that as well. But. Uh, we have the surveying data already in our system. Uh, we have the naturescape, the irrigation data in our system. Now we're waiting for the Mariani plan uh, to incorporate into our system. As soon as we have that, we put them all together. We pot potentially could have it done by Friday. Uh, and when we do that, we drive it down to IDOT. We give them a week to review it. If they can get through it that quickly, which they should be able to, uh, and we get the permit. So 
as Bob noted, this we, we've contacted IDOT and we've worked with them. They understand it's an important project. And as soon as we can get our plans completed, a PE to stamp, then we're driving down to Schomburg. So okay. it's it, doable. I, guess I would just add, too, that you know, following up on Don's comments about this work is that, uh, you know, I don't want everyone to think that this was just going to be done for the BMW. I think the BMW is certainly the impetus to get it done quicker, but we all realize that we have to do it, period. So hopefully the amount of funding that we're going to get from the Route 60 partners and everyone else, well, they, they know, they also, not only the residents, but the uh, business folks in Conway Park have expressed a desire that you know, this doesn't, this isn't really a very good image either for entering into the corporate <clears throat> entity that we all belong to. So I think that the desire amongst not just the residents, but the corporate world as well to, to fix it. And certainly the uh, outing with uh, next September and BMW is, is, a, is a big push. So we'd like to get it done. And if it, yeah, is it going to be perfect? It may not, but I think I think at least 80, 90 percent of it will be at that time, and if we have to tweak it over, you know, the next couple of years to make it perfect, um, we'll have the opportunity to do so. But it will have a vast improvement from where we're at today. Exactly. Let me let me just inject it, Don. You make some very persuasive arguments, and and I agree with every comment you made. Mm -hmm. We know a lot more now than we knew last year, but we don't know what we don't know, and if. I knew that the $384,000 would solve the problem. It's a lot of dough, but I'm totally on board. What we don't know is whether or not we're going to put 384000 investment out there, and for some unknown reason that we're not aware of now or because of IDOT or whatever, it fails again, and it's another 384 down the drain. So. I think it's very wise your two-pronged approach to do the excavation and the irrigation, although it wouldn't really be needed if you did hardscaping, paver blocks, or stamped concrete. Um, I could go along with something like that. Okay. I, I just wanted to make a comment about this. Uh, this goes back a really long time, and it probably predates everybody on the council here except me. Um, there was an entire ad hoc committee commission of uh, uh, of which I was a member and I it was a long time ago it was probably 15 years ago about route 60 about the route 60 corridor I think it was 2002 and, okay so 10 years ago yeah. um, the notion of this corridor being certainly a critical gateway if not the most critical gateway was a starting point for that commission and a big part of what we were considering, and there was a lot of work put into it, and there's a whole master plan for that corridor, was, was that this is the most frequently used entry point to the city of Lake Forest. And it looked awful back then. It looks better now, but it's still, as good as it looks in some areas, this median is an eyesore. And, you know, I think um, there are just, there, it, it, I think, the notion that this is an important gateway to the community has maybe not been given enough uh, attention in this conversation. So I just wanted to put an exclamation point on that. The, um, I've done a non-scientific survey of a few people, and they break down into two basic camps, one that agrees with everything that you've said about this, that, that this is a critical gateway. It should look much nicer. The other group basically says, we could care less, plant grass on it, I don't want to pay for it. And I don't know what the numbers are, but I can tell you that there's this, you know, I think the further away you get from Route 60, the more you get to the latter. And that the only options that allow you to avoid the major expense are turf, okay, or, excuse me, grass, which are cheap, you can replant it every year if you want to do it, and you'll never get to this number, okay? and. I think there are probably quite a few people who would go right along with that notion, thinking that nice grassy strips, they're not that big, you got the plantings on the side, no big deal. $400,000, eh. So although I think we can talk ourselves into saying this really should look nice and I totally understand it, 
and I don't even disagree with it. I'm just sort of presenting the other side of what I hear from people because he lives in that end of <laughs> Ward 3. I live in that end of Ward 3. And that end, you tend to hear more of the grass argument. That end, you tend to hear more of this argument. So I don't know, you know what it is in Ward 1 or 2 or 4. But I at least think we ought to consider that, that many people might look at this as really sort of an outrageous expense for a median. Can you even get grass to grow there the way it is now? I mean, on an ongoing sort of, or is it going to go dead every year and have to be replanted? It would go dormant during like droughts or the summer would be brown like <clears throat> everybody who doesn't have irrigation would have. So it would have been brown for the example, go um, dormant by fall. Um, and every year we would have to place, you know, the edges possibly because they would be damaged by the salt. So you would have a constant maintenance even on turf, but it would <clears throat> be just the grass issue, you know, a grass issue. Um, and it's, you know, <clears throat> going to constantly, you know, need to be watered or do something done with it. So the one thing I wanted to mention too is that we can separate out the plant component of it. However, because of the volume of plants, depending on what you select to do, we do want to get, we'd have to let nurseries know in the winter so they can be growing the plants so that we would have the volume in order to plant in time for spring. So that's one of the, one of the goals here, unless you want to do very small, very small plants versus the gallon kind of pots with immediate impact. So those, those are just things to balance, you know, keep in mind. But, um, you know, that is one of the things talking with Mariani uh, has said to us is that with enough notice, we can begin to get these growing so that you would have them for your spring and would be in the right um, strength and caliber to be sustained through this season, this next season, so. You know, I, I don't wanna cut the discussion off, but what, what I think the idea tonight was to have Mary present this, to get some engagement here Let's, you know, we, the, the target is to try to learn as much as we can and understand <coughs> it as much as we can, perhaps in two weeks, if and when that time comes, then to make a decision on how much, if any, of this we're willing to commit to. Um, and I think, you know, certainly Mary and Peter and Chuck are, are, are open for calls and questions and further discussion, but if it's okay, we've got a couple other items on the agenda. We've got less than 15 minutes to knock them out, so why don't we? We'll keep on going if that's can, right. can I just add sure, 30 seconds worth? Um, just following up on Randy Tax comments, this is an inverted median, um, meaning it's deeper in the center instead of being crowned for water to run off. Maybe what you could do between now and our next meeting or in the interim, with an inverted median, I believe you can bring in a couple inches of nice black topsoil and just plant grass seed. Right, I mean, we, the backside of the curbs are revealed, so we could add topsoil to it and replant and hopefully it would work better. So I'd like to know what that cost alternative is. You don't have to respond to it, but I'd like to know if that's feasible and if what the cost alternative is to just topping it with fresh uh, topsoil and planting it in grass. Yeah, and, I, and I think Mike is a follow-up too, and I think Bob and Mary mentioned that, you know, we've had preliminary discussions with Homeowners Association with the Office Park, with the stakeholders around along 60. I think we'll have a better feel for that as well, hopefully in the next two weeks, for what the commitment level is. I know a couple of the homeowners boards are going to meet over the next two weeks. I know that there's been discussion with Conway Farms Golf Club. So I think we also have a better sense of kind of how we frame the overall cost of this thing, and I think that'll also help us maybe make a decision as well. Um, just, I would like to see a living example of a inverted median with this type of planting that survived the last two winters somewhere in the state or of Illinois or Wisconsin or somewhere nearby okay just to make sure we're not making the same right. mistake twice and to get sense. an idea of what percentage sure the stakeholders would be throwing in right. those are the two things I'd like okay. all right David thanks and just indication at least as I said here the idea of getting the infrastructure the soil uh, taken out and replaced yeah, at this point, I think we need to work in that direction that I'd support. It. I, I okay. would encourage everyone to get going on this. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks, Mary, very much. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is discussion on community signs. Kathy?
Thank you, Chairman Schoenheider, uh, Mayor Cowie, members of the council. At the direction of the city manager, uh, staff has been working on a very preliminary uh, exploration of entrance sign concepts. Um, so in the next uh, four minutes, I'm gonna go through this real quickly. <clears throat> um, what we did after getting this charge was to conduct a study of entrance signs. Um, we reviewed uh, signs from various locations, signs within Lake Forest. Uh, we developed preliminary design parameters for entrance signs. Excuse me, Peter, Peter, could, or someone in the rear, could I ask if you could, we are still in the middle of the Committee of the Whole meeting, so if you're coming for the Council meeting, you still have 10 minutes to wait but we'd love to finish this up if we could. Thanks. So we've done some preliminary work. We're here presenting those preliminary concepts to you. If this sounds like a study you wish us to pursue, then we would look for your direction to do so. Um, in reviewing signs, uh, we looked not only within the United States, but we also looked outside at, at signage in Europe, uh, looked at signage across the United States, then brought it closer, looked at signage in North Shore communities, and then actually did a study of signage throughout our own community. Uh, we looked at different kinds of signs. Primarily, mm -hmm. entrance signs for communities are one of two kinds, either monument signs or post and panel signs. Uh, the monument signs tend to uh, appear more commercial, commercial in nature. They're more massive, they're lower to the ground, um, they often have not only commercial nature, but are used frequently for uh, towns that really um, do a lot of tourism uh, as a support of their economy. Uh, post and panel signs are, tend to be more historic. Uh, they tend to be used for smaller communities um, and are more residential in nature. As we looked at signs throughout Lake Forest, uh, looked at signs that that really are most prominent, are most well known. The post and panel sign is one that's used frequently throughout the community. Um, and if you look at the comparison of uh, most of the post and panel signs with our current entrance signs, a clear difference is <clears throat> the height of those signs. As we looked at each of our existing entrance signs, uh, we asked the questions, are they visible? Are they readable? Are they in the right location? And what message do they send? Um, do they evoke uh, a feeling or emotion as people actually enter our community? Importantly, our entrance size, signs aren't just on Route 60 and 41, but some of them are located on those higher volume streets, but many are also located on very low volume streets. Um, at the south end of the community on Telegraph and Ridge, uh, coming entering the uh, east side of the community at McKinley, for instance. Um, those are, have very different characteristics than Route 60 that uh, you were just talking about. Um, we played the game of can you find the entrance sign? Um, and this is Route 60, and uh, that entrance sign is just about in that location. Uh, very difficult to see, and in this case, it's located in an area where uh, people are just coming off the ramp of the tollway or just coming over the bridge. They're focused on that. They're for focused on merging, focused on the street light. Uh, there's a lot of utilities right in that area. And one thing we noticed about our current entrance signs is they really have a look that confuses them with uh, just everyday street signs. Uh, our summary of our existing signs, although they've served the community well for about the past 15 years, the existing signs are, are obscured uh, by either vege vegetation or other street signs. They're difficult to see and difficult to distinguish. Um, and after going through all this study, we looked at, uh, we really came to a conclusion that it was appropriate, not necessarily to go out and replace every entrance sign, but to really get a prototype established so that if we want to focus, if the council wants to focus on Route 60, for instance, then maybe that's one location where we make the change. Um, we also looked at establishing a prototype that perhaps could be used in different proportions and a different scale uh, at other city-owned sites, whether it's uh, city buildings or parks. 
Uh, we established some preliminary design parameters that the entrance signs should be simple, they should be elegant, they should be reflective of the residential character of the community. In your recent strategic planning session, uh, you did reaffirm that Lake Forest is primarily a residential community. Uh, they should nod to history. Historic uh, aspects of the community have, have been identified as being important. That there should be some kind of a common theme among, that, that ties it together with other aspects of the community, and that they should be appropriately sized in relation to uh, their purpose and their location. So it may mean that entrance signs vary from site to site. Um, with that, the, the prototype that we are looking at um, is a, a post and panel sign uh, consistent with uh, the Anuencia sign, for instance, the original sign designed by Stanley Anderson for uh, Lake Forest High School. It is not refined, um, but props are always good, so I did bring a prop. Um, uh, so this is just a mock-up. Um, this sign, unlike our current sign, which is a flat panel, would have some relief to it. Um, we haven't worked through those details. Um, would have some, some framing, uh, some trim. Um, and interesting, we're proposing that the population be removed from the sign. First of all, what's out there right now is wrong. Um, and uh, by, having the, by adding the year to the sign, it really does give that sense, not only residential in character because of the style of the sign, but also sends that message right at the outset that the history of the community is important. Um, so with that, I would just very quickly ask for the council, for council direction on should the study of entrance signs continue to be pursued? Um, are the design parameters that we reviewed appropriate? And uh, if your answers to both of those questions are yes, um, or even maybe, um, we will continue to work on the conceptual sign do further refinement, do further study, present it to the Historic Preservation Commission, and then ultimately come back to you with not only a, a final plan for the sign, but also a plan for implementation. I would be happy to answer questions or hear your comments. I think it looks great. That's a great direction. I'm entirely on board for it. I just wondered, uh, historically, and because it's going in a historic path, are there old Lake Forest signs or entry signs that might have been available in the 40s or 20s that we could model off of? Or we we really did nothing? try and find old signs. What we do know is that um, some of the more prominent architects in the community, Howard Van Dorn Shaw, David Adler, for instance, they did not, we could not find a sign that they designed. On the other hand, we, did, we do have signs that were designed by Stanley Anderson. Um, we do know that the Awensia Club sign um, has been in place for a very long time. And, and the interesting thing, if you look at the Anwensia sign, the bottom of the post from which the sign hangs is actually at 14 feet. And probably on Green Bay Road, it's a little uncomfortable for your eye, but um, the height of that compared to our entrance signs is, uh, is really a significant difference. We can continue to look for old entrance signs, but to date, we haven't found any. I think it's a great direction. I In an improvement. Yes and yes. Yeah. How, how many signs are we talking about? I, I could count on my map, but I want to say there's about uh, 14, 16 entrance signs. Um, and again, it's, it's not necessarily, it's really, I know you've seen a lot of master plans lately. I would almost call it a master plan for signage. It doesn't mean that if a sign's approved that every sign in the community needs to be, uh, needs to be replaced. There are some signs that we noticed um, really are obscured and maybe we want to if we move forward with this, we would actually bring you a plan for implementation and have it be part of the, capital, the city's capital improvement plan over a number of years. Okay. Kathy, I think the message from everyone is keep going. Yeah. Thank you. Looks great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, last item on the agenda, opportunity for public comment. Any out there on specific items relating to the committee, the whole agenda only. <laughs> if you have a comment on the council agenda, that will, you'll have that opportunity as well. Uh, hearing none, I would ask for a motion to adjourn the Committee of the Whole. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned and council meeting will start in about five minutes. Thank you.